Three, two, one. Ni hao! <laughs> Whoosh, Stephanie. Um, welcome to Hangzhou. Okay, this is a weird angle, right? Okay, you've got my... Um, first of all, there's probably a hellish echo in this area, but there's this beautiful view of the city of Hangzhou, China, right behind me. And so I, I just love this glass wall in the room. <laughs> it's so cool. No, I don't live here. I could not afford to live in a place like this, but it's awesome. I, do, as you can probably guess from where I'm sitting and just my general blah-blah-blah-ness, I um, was not prepared to make a video tonight. Um, not unprepared, but I wasn't really planning on it because um, I just wasn't. I was going to take the night off. But when I got home from dinner, oh, amazing Japanese food. If you're ever in Hangzhou, China, and you take the train station, about three minutes away by taxi, there's this city outlet mall that's not on any map, but just, I don't know. Oh, Joe, oh, 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 oh. I do know how to get there because it's right across the street from the metro station. That means that it translates to five, no, exploding dragon mouth. It's jaw, Z-H-A, dragon, long, and I don't know the tones of either one of those, but then the third word is kao, I don't remember the tone for that one either, but it's Z-H-A space, probably not space, L-O-N-G space, K-O-U, and it literally, if I'm doing this correctly, is exploding dragon mouth, and right across the street from that is the small city outlet, and downstairs there's a Japanese place which is just phenomenal, especially by Hangzhou standards. Hangzhou restaurants aren't quite as good as, as Shanghai ones, so it was a complete another accident that we were there tonight. So I got inspired because of the tofu and the uh, tempura and the mushrooms, and I just had like this fantastic dinner. And so I started to think about the tones in Chinese again, and trust me, I have to be in a good mood to be happy thinking about Chinese tones, because the pinion's hard enough, the characters are fun, but they're hard enough, and then the tones, the tones... I know people are probably going to get mad that I'm separating pinion from tones, but I, I'm trying not to, but it's super hard. So I came across this article, and I, I wrote down all these notes. So I could tell you, I'm so sorry, I just gave you the top of my head. <laughs> I will move the notes up towards us, shall we? Okay, so I made all these notes because I want to give credit where credit is due because it is so exciting to read about this stuff and so many people are posting tips on how to learn the tones correctly from the beginning. And what started this when I got home is I started watching YouTube videos. Remember I said one of my new goals is to watch inspiration videos on polyglots that have learned Chinese or have learned languages or are learning languages and to steal some tips from them? Done tonight. I first started watching Fluent in Mandarin, which is done by a very clever, very fluent in Mandarin man named Chris. Um, and it was like a how to remember tones video and I'll put the link in the show notes below. Don't you worry, I'll hook you up. Um, so I started watching that and he was talking about the tones and he, he reminded me that people were talking about color coding them and people were talking about like different ways that you can remember them but do them correctly from the beginning or at least try to do them correctly from the beginning. And I thought, yeah, I wasn't doing that because I was focused on the characters themselves which is fine because I did it for maybe a month and I think that, that way actually helped me was to do meaning first and stroke order for a second and then start working on the pinion for in the pronunciation, which are probably the same thing. That worked for me. But now I am in the tone struggle world. Yay! So then I went from Chris's video, which I'll put in the show notes, and then I went to this article that I read a few days ago, ago and I posted on Twitter from uh, Sino Splice, which is a new website for me. I think they must have different authors because then they had John Pasden, um, and if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry, but they had his article on, quote, tone and color in Chinese, and he went into, like, serious detail, and the comments on it were amazing and interactive, and it was really great, but basically he quoted Dumit, D-U-M-M-I-T-T, -T, which apparently is a gentleman who put out a book on tone, co colors for tones, um, and it's apparently one that a lot of 
a lot of people use as their color system for the t for learning tones. And the author, John Pasden, he talked about, and I love this, he talked about tone four being an angry tone. And I was getting the feeling, I was start I almost did a video about this, about starting to get the feeling that some of the tone some of the tone did have a connotation, negative, positive, or what have you. And I was like, mm, hold off, hold off, hold off. And I've been holding off. It's probably somewhere deep in my notes to make a video about that. So I was like jumping up and down in my chair and like so excited that somebody else felt that way about tone four. And so he color coded his tone four in red. Now, I had in my notes that Domet did dark blue for, no, no, yes, no, no, he did have red also. So where did they vary then? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so in Domet, dark one, dark one, <laughs> tone one was dark blue. In this author, John Pasden, he had one that's orange. Two, he had, Domet had orange. Two, he had green. Three, he had blue like water, and uh, sorry, shui, shui. Oh, I think I did the right tone for that. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> I've only been using that word for years. That's a cheater because I've actually known that word for a while. Uh, unlike in Vietnam, when we rarely use the word for water, we used uh, la vie because that was the most popular brand. So you would try to use the Vietnamese word, and they'd go what, and you'd say la vie, and they'd give you the bottle of water. Ah, language is a tricky thing. No, I don't know Vietnamese. I know some functional restaurant Vietnamese. Oh gosh, I would love to use that right now. I love Vietnamese food. Focus! Okay, so three from Dumit was dark green and three from John Pasden in this article. We already did that. It was blue. So four was the same. One was different. Two was different. Okay, so they do have differences, but they both have red for four. But what this author did is he based it all off of four. Sorry, my arm's getting really sore. <laughs> I'm gonna have my fingers in here a bit. Hopefully my phone doesn't fall. How do I do this? I have nothing with me because I didn't think I would be filming this week. <sighs> okay, um, so let me make this much shorter than the article because I'm gonna link John Pasden's Sino Splice article below for you because you need to read this. It's really freaking awesome. I'm so sorry, I wish I had my tripod with me. Um, so he based it off of red for four for tone four, and then he did kind of um, semantic, uh, semantic-ish uh, meanings of similar words within those tones. And like I said, for tone one, he did orange, tone two, green, tone three, blue, and tone four, red, and I think he did silver or something for tone five. Um, <clears throat> And honestly, since there's no tone for tone five, who cares if you're color coding it? <laughs> Bleh. Um, so there was that, and I went into my play. I liked how he explained it a lot. And although it'll make it harder when I see color coding anywhere else, I did go into my pleco. Pleco. I'm trying to say it correctly after months of saying pleco, which I think I did because of Play-Doh. I love Play-Doh. So much fun. If I had to choose between Play-Doh and Lego, I would cry. Just saying. Anyway, um, if you don't know what those two toys are, have some fun in Google. Oh my god, go into YouTube. And, or buy some and play with them. Especially the hair salon one with Play-Doh. I never had that. I always wanted that. A lot of my friends wanted the Barbie uh, doll house, playhouse, whatever, the dream house. Uh-uh. I wanted the hair, the hair Play-Doh thing. I can't focus. Dinner was so good. Oh my god. Anyway, so I changed mine to the color system that he was talking about in this article because they really, really gelled with the meanings that I was already starting to feel and his examples and the color wheel that he put it on and it just, it made so much sense to me. So I changed mine in Pleco. So they are now following his instead of Domit's and that may come to bite me in the ass later and I will take that as it comes. I will. And who knows, I might change it again later, but I doubt it. This really feels like a good color coding system for me. And I'm really glad this happened tonight because I am breaking out my note cards tomorrow and I'm gonna start doing some paper note cards to go with my Pleco note cards. So depending on what uh, tool I have with me, I'm going to be able to do note cards anywhere I want. 
So now I get to break out my colored pens and do them one way and not have to redo them in a few days when I decide on a different color system. Because as much as I say I might change my color system later, I'm not changing it. <laughs> Once they're set and I start making the flashcards, I'm just going to stick with it. And since I feel like a harmony with this color system that he introduced, I feel like this is a really good way to go. And I'm a really visual person. <clears throat> and um, so, and because I'm, I'm pretty sure, 99% sure, I'm moving everything over to Pleco instead of Anki, just surely because of time. I'm spending a lot of time making cards, more time making cards than studying them. And I don't want that kind of ratio on study creation time. So I'm going to lose a lot of visuals in the switch over to Pleco because I don't think you can put images in there. It's mostly just the, um, the word, the character, the word, the opinion, and the color coding. So I'm going to lose a considerable amount. So I'm going to have to remember as I'm doing those flashcards in Pleco to, Im to put the image in my head as I'm doing the flashcard, um, which I think I can do as long as I rem remind myself to constantly do it. I think that would work quite well. But, um, and they already have the sound file, so that's in there automatically. And there's more information in Pleco, so when I want to learn more about that flashcard, I just hit the character and I can geek out and learn a lot more. So there's more information and there's more room to grow with, with the characters than just making my own cards and adding to them as I go. And adding to them is effort. And I want the effort to go into learning, speaking, and reading, especially the language, more so than creating um, my own flashcards. So, sorry, Anki, which I'm probably also saying incorrectly. I'm saying everything incorrectly. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. So, I'm super excited about these resources. Um, I just found Sino Splice this week, and I didn't even get to read the article until tonight. So, I'm super excited to geek out and find out more about them. And Fluent in Mandarin, Chris's channel, I just started watching it a couple of days ago. So, um, and it again shows up in my algorithm and I don't mind because I'm still watching the two the two women that I mentioned in the previous video. I'm still watching their stuff. So this is in addition to the other inspiration videos. Not instead of because I'm sticking to my plan. I may not be doing everything every day, but I already said that I wasn't going to do everything every day. I just wanted to do them frequently and I wanted to focus on the resources that are working for me and I am. Mm. <laughs> I'm still trying to find the perfect traffic. Perfect. A good tracking system for right now. That is a struggle for me, but that's a whole other video and a whole another day. So that's it. I just wanted to share color coding goodness, a restaurant, because I have to talk about food, despite the fact that it's not Chinese food and it's not related at all to tones. <laughs> there was kimchi, which is red, so there's your connection. I had Korean food at a Japanese restaurant and that reminded me of Chinese tones. Bing! Huh. Which is a search engine that's used more than Google in China. Okay, not as much as Baidu. Don't call me on that. I know Baidu's used more than that. Herr, feel myself getting defensive. So, it is clearly time for me to, and you're going to laugh at this, <clears throat> drink my, oh yeah, you see a tea bag in there, right? You see that tea bag? Tea bag in a wine glass. Because I just, I'm so old, I don't drink that much anymore. And my cold is still semi-wrecking my throat, and I spoke all day for work. So, I'm drinking some hibiscus tea, which is also night Chinese, but I am not a purist. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to your comments, suggestions, recommendations. Um, I look forward to you checking out the links below if you are learning Chinese. I'm excited to share these resources with you because I think these are both really, really awesome resources and I hope you use and abuse them the way that I have or differently or in some way that fits you. I just realized I could see the video right here. I really wanted you to see the city more than me, but oh well. Maybe I'll try to make a video tomorrow when there's actual sunlight. <gasps> Where is it? Where is it? I'm still looking at my notes because I cannot remember hello and goodbye. <laughs> Maybe I should make those into flashcards. It's coming. All right, Sajian, goodbye.